Hey everybody, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've started including some more Reason content into my channel. And that's because I want to diversify a little bit. I'm still going to be focusing on Logic. Logic is still the end game for everything I do. I love Logic. I want to use Logic. I'm not switching to Reason. But I really like the new Reason Rack plugin, and I'm going to be using it quite a bit uh, and doing some things with it. So today, we're looking at this plugin that just this uh, new instrument that was released this morning uh, from Reason, and it's included with Reason Plus. And um, yeah, it's a FM synth, and it's called Algorithm, this FM synthesizer. And FM synthesis is one of my things. I love FM synthesis. And uh, for me, this fills a huge hole inside of Logic's instruments because we do have inside Logic an FM synth. It's called EFM1. And it's old as dirt. It's really old. And it essentially has one modulator and one carrier, which is the equivalent of having like two operators. And it, it's cool. It sounds fine. But this new thing, this new algorithm instrument from Reason, um, has nine operator slots, each configurable as an FM operator, wavetable oscillator, wavetable is awesome, multi-mode filter, or shaper. And then you can connect them however you want. So this thing is a beast. And uh, it it's going to inc increase some of the sounds that I get in this style. And I really love that uh, we can do more with this. Um, I think it's just a really awesome opportunity to create some really intense sounds. Now, one of the best ways to test out some of this stuff, uh, because I think that uh, these instruments have some really cool things is to click the randomizer button but to turn on some additional features of the randomization I could hit this a hundred times and 90 times out of that hundred, it's going to sound kind of like this glassy metallic sound. That's what FM synthesis does the best. That's not the only thing we get from this. I mean, there's a lot of interesting sounds you can come up with. I mean, you can come up with some really pretty sounds. Um, and that comes with the, the basic uh, presets we have here. So if you don't know what FM synthesis is, here's the, the five second uh, description of that. It's when, so back in the day before this with subtractive synthesizers, we had these LFOs, low frequency oscillators and they modulate other parts of your synth. So say you have uh, like a sine wave that's playing and you use an LFO to modulate the pitch or the volume. So like for instance, with volume, you go wah, 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 louder and softer, louder and softer. At a slow rate, LFO, low frequency, means it, it goes pretty slow. Well, as you turn up a low frequency oscillator or just turn it into an oscillator, which has the full range, you can still modulate the pitch or volume or other aspect of the original, and you start to get these new sounds because both of those are in the audible range. Instead of previously, we would expect an LFO to be below the audible range for the most part, um, or in the low, low frequencies, which maybe you could hear, but are still pretty low. Um, but most of the time out of the range of hearing. So then we'd have two audible frequencies modulating each other, come up with crazy sounds, and then uh, the DX7, which had the six operators, um, was doing multiple levels of modulation with all these. 
And now this takes it up to nine potential FM operators. So we can do a ton of different things and we can actually come through and use this, uh, the little parameter, I don't know what we're calling this, the matrix, the off, no, it's not the offsets. That's down there. But this little section here where we can actually come through and um, let's add another one. Uh, we can reorganize these and move them around however we want and that changes how they're going to manipulate each other. And so we can uh, and change the ordering of those, etc. And then we have the actual onboard controls. We have a filter for each of these. Uh, and we have tuning and uh, panning, all of the stuff that's actually built onto the each operator. And so that really gives us a ton of flexibility. But on top of that, we can change some of these to oscillators. And so the oscillator is not necessarily, um, let's see, connect. I can connect the different things here. So they can actually go into the chain. And become part of that. Change to different type of oscillator. So we can actually do pretty traditional synthesis with this at the same time. Uh, we're not just stuck into doing FM. Uh, we can do wavetable. We can do just basic subtractive. Uh, all of that. I mean, this is really a new tool that does a lot. But it's really going to be great for those type of sounds which come with FM. Those metallic sounds. The real long pad-like sounds. Bell sounds. Let's get another one. That sound, that pure, like, bell-like sound inside there. I mean, that's, let me find a good one here. This, for instance. So cool. There's very few ways to as easily get that type of sound. And so this becomes a really important tool to be able to do that. Um, I think that's a, a good place to stop with the introduction here. We're not doing a full tutorial, but uh, I think you'll be seeing me in my other videos start to use this algorithm instrument uh, more and more often because it's something that, again, Logic doesn't have a really great option for. It has an FM synth, but it's nowhere near what this is. And in fact, I wish I knew exactly the age of the, the EFM one because certainly this thing has been around since the earliest days of Logic and uh, is not uh, capable of really doing what we would want a fully featured FM synthesizer to do. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this look at Algorithm and um, we'll be doing... Uh, our fourth part of our live stream series this week tonight and um, we'll end with the fifth one tomorrow so more videos coming soon